Hello. Okay, this time, hello. You are you you're are watching. You're listening to where my pros at with me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a that's a good brief summary. Um, so on this show, we like to do a little review of, of books that we've read in the past week, and this week we're reviewing um, Use of Weapons by Ian M. Banks. Uh, I will try my hardest to give a brief synopsis. This book is particularly complex. It has uh, got a really strange um, timeline that is explored throughout the plot, um, with one series of stories going in a chronological order, and another going in a reverse chronological order, meeting somewhere in the middle. Um, using the same characters who sometimes use different names and then to top it off there's an epilogue and a prologue that are a little bit different yeah and it's not obvious where they lie it's a space opera basically it's uh it is probably one of the most science fiction books i've ever read um unfortunately i did not finish this book for um for some reasons which we'll delve into not due to not caring just due to a lack just due to the fact that you didn't yeah, you didn't agree with the book. Also kind of that unfortunate that I seem to have been getting ill right as we start live casting because I have very strong and passionate opinions, which actually might be kind of a good thing that they're kind of dampered by <laughs> my sinuses. <laughs> um, I, however, have read the book twice, um, both times in audiobook format. This so your suggestion. Yes, yeah. this was my suggestion. Um, your favorite much banks. to my chagrin. Yes. Um, so I first read this book in 2016, as I learned when I checked my Goodreads earlier today. Um, so I first read this book four years ago. In that time, I've grown a lot as a person. My understanding of things has changed, and my perceptions of the world has changed. And my rating of the book went from a five star to a 2.5 to three. Um, and we'll explain why throughout, throughout, this, throughout this review. Um, Can I just preface, however, that um, I quite enjoy Ian Banks. I've read The Wasp Factory, which I think is an excellent study on gender and expectations. I've also read Player of Games, which I thought was absolutely excellent. And I kind of wish you'd chosen that one. I do I too. I think this would have been a different discussion. <laughs> um, my main, sorry, my main problem with the book um, is that there's two characters, two main characters really, is Sama. Sma. Sma and Zoidberg. What's his name? <laughs> um, Zakalway. Zakalway, right. <laughs> um, I was really disappointed because, uh, you know, Ian Banks has created this kind of. The, I, I know that the use of weapons is part of this larger kind of uh, the culture series, which is about this kind of utopian culture and. It sounds excellent. It's it's a very you could tell he put a lot of thought. It's very intricate. It's very layered. Um, there's a lot of empathy in a lot of the other books that he's written. I could not get past Sma. Um, I I have also changed quite a fair bit, and I. I don't know. I, I have some thoughts on gender and. Um, just Graham laughing at the Zoidberg comment. <laughs> Hi, Legend Tinker. Thank you for joining us. I have a lot of opinions on gender. Um, and I just, this just rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, Smalls of, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a sexual character that enjoys sex. But I think a lot of traps that a lot of authors fall into, and a lot of people in general fall into, is that women's liberation isn't the opposite of Victorian puranicalness. It's women women's liberation they're supposed to be treated as humans as uh, you know we're, we're, we're people we are flawed we you know we fart we uh, we, we we think we do we profess, so perform murder some of us are very complex deep people we're all the point is that we're humans and being sexually liberated to the point where that's the main trait of your character is not female it's not a female positive it's not empowering thing. it's not empowering and it's kind of the sex in the city for me it's you know that's you know women's you know fucking around sorry screwing around like uh guys are you know like like a, like a guy which is kind of horrible to say about guys as well it's it's just i sorry i'm getting off point i am ill small is naked um in almost every scene or sexual or doing something sexual and that is fine i love a character that likes sex but god damn can you give her something else can you give her another hobby gardening anything in the first quarter of the book. round her out you know yeah and, and there was that one 
one <laughs> I came the in cult? and I was like, why does this exist? There was a quote where Zikikai, Z- Z- Zoidberg, um, <laughs> is in obviously like this medieval kind of like area of, of, of the universe. And this young prepubescent princess comes in and he's torn between lust for her or fatherly protection, which is just another and way of saying Madonna. Wh- when you came through and said that to me, I I'd only just started rereading this. And I was like, that's not in this book. That's ridiculous. Surely you're just exaggerating or something. And you came back through with the book and you quoted it to me. There's actually a sentence that pretty much explicitly says... And again, we, we are misquoting it, but uh, effectively says, I, I was torn between my lust and uh, a fatherly protectiveness for, for this, for this young, pre-pubescent, prepubescent princess. I think you said just becoming of age. So yeah. that means it could be 16, but it could also be 12. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people um, So, you know, I mean, I know Zakawa is a character that we're not supposed to like necessarily, especially towards the end of the book. Um, well, in which case, we know it's not actually Zakawa, but still. Um, it's still uh, not an acceptable thing that the only characters in the book seem to be um, uh, either sexually confused and um, that's their entire trait, which is the case with, with Sma, who is a recurring character in the culture series you see in other books. Um, and she does possess other traits, but part, one of her main, her main characteristics is the fact that she's incredibly sexually um, active. She's, mul- she's frequently having orgies. She's frequently um, having, fine. later on in the book, the part that you didn't get to, she, she's having an important call with Zakalway, who's trying to figure out something that's going on down on the planet during his mission, and she's having sex with somebody at the time and keeps interrupting what they're saying with moans. Um, yeah, so that, that, you know, in retrospect, I, 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 like I said, I originally gave this a five star, and I had to downgrade it because while in the perspective of the culture, I know that Ian M. Banks is was not a racist and i was not a sexist man Absolutely. right he was incredibly empowering to Absolutely. women throughout it was one yeah. of the most utopic uh progressive series of sci-fi that i've ever read mm-hmm. and i think has ever been written and the wasp factory alone which it was probably arguably arguably one of the best w- works he's best known for yeah Absolutely. Great, great study on gender and expectation, societal expectations. But this was just too much for me. And I just... the, the, the part, there was two big problems. One, I, both from me and Banks, I think. I, I was seeing this as somebody who has read all the other culture books pretty much beforehand. Mm-hmm. And I had this perspective of it being a utopic, futuristic, already set in a progressive world. Where when that standard's already set, a character who's really just interested in sex isn't that surprising in that culture because they're free to do that. And that, that expectation was set for me beforehand. However, this time I read through it with the expectation that this is a standalone book. I didn't consider it as part of the culture series. Yeah. And, and talking with you also helped me. I mean, like that helped me realize these, these parts existed. And I, I actually, you know, instead of when you're reading a book for the second time, you don't necessarily pay as much attention. This time I paid more attention than the first time. Yeah. And there was lots of parts that made me uncomfortable. And um, not just at the start of the book, but later on. Um, One of the main plot devices is also that... Um because uh, I did read a summary of it, is that, you know, the two brothers who, Zog is a callway and the, you know, fake Zukalway who calls himself Zukalway or whatever, they're... At least the email. They're using their... One of them is using their sister as a way to hurt the other, and then the sister gets turned into a literal object. Yeah. Um, so, I almost wish it was a little brother just so that it wasn't an obviously sexist trope. You know, um, I, don't th- I mean, I think that it could have worked. I just, for me, it was just kind of like a perfect storm of everything. And I just, cause I, I, you know, I've read him before. I, I love, I've, I have read, you know, before and I've loved everything. So I was really surprised. And I thought that there, maybe there was something wrong with me that maybe I was being too Not all. snowflakey, but, um, it just, it just was too difficult to get through for me. I, I just, I, you know, I'm a bit shy when it comes to science fiction anyway because it is kind of a boys club, science fiction, and, and you know, or it has been in the past. I think and that we are why looking I hoped, to... Yeah. yeah. And, and I just think to be an introduction to the... This was not the right... No, this the is right not book. the right book. You know, I'm not saying don't read it. I think you absolutely should read it and you don't need to agree with me. And please read it for yourself and come to your own conclusions. But if it's going to be your first culture novel, I wouldn't, I wouldn't no. suggest it to you. I know that was a bad idea on my part. Um, Player of Games is really good. Player of Games is fantastic. I've yeah. read that one three times now, and that is truly excellent. Um, okay, so this fell, this fails the the Bechtel, Beckel, Beckel, and somebody. Beckel Williams. Willis? Bechtel I don't know. Williams? Beckel Wallace. Know. Beckel Wallace test. Mm. Um, and that's basically a test that says: Is there a single scene in the entire book or TV show or whatever? 
where two female characters have a conversation that is not about a man. And that does not happen in this book at all. Not once. Um, which is... Which Actually, is, that's not true. I think that there, there was a part in, at the party where she's talking to one of the female engineers and there she was like where are we going and the, the female engineer was where are we going and then the the ship is trying to distract them from having so th- i mean that could, uh, that could count right i, suppose, I mean they do later have an orgy but you know i suppose they would pass for that the problem is that there's machines there and and technically speaking they're they're sexless they're they're genderless right they don't they can't identify which way some kind of do and and have more fem- feminine or masculine personalities i guess um so you could argue that but it's still, there's still another gender there, even if it's not male or female, I would argue. So maybe it pa- semi passes the, the Bechtel test. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, for me, I just, I was feeling some kind of way. And uh, I just, you just get a little bit fed up with it. Um, so I, 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 I have to say, I'm, I was disappointed. Um, I felt like there was a great promise in the novel. I really liked the the way that the, the flipping back and forth between the frames, uh, the way he describes the worlds is is so lush and yeah, you know really detailed and fantastic. Not a single likable character or a character that you know felt real to me. And for me, I, I'm a bit of a purist. I need to feel like. This is some. This is a character I can understand. This is a character that I understand the motivations. I understand who that person is, and it just just didn't with mm. me. It just didn't hit. And like I said, I'm disappointed. I'm a Banks fan, and this this really disappointed me. So after you first told me this, I made a point of trying to find similar reviews to see because you said to me, "Am I the only one who thinks this in the world that this is this is quite sexist?" Yeah, because you know and, that's the thing is when you, you do think like, "Oh God, here I go again," and trigger warning. So yeah, <laughs> but, so so I I looked around and I found two reviews on Goodreads out of many to be fair, but there was two major reviews. One of which was a hell of a wall of text. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna re- like actually refer to these directly. Um, but if you look for, if you look w- within the Goodreads reviews and you search for the keyword "sexist," you do find two. Uh, one is by I think a, a woman. One's by a man. And they say um, one briefly just says, "I couldn't finish this book. I got you know 40 pages in, and I was put off by the character sma. It's just sexist drivel, and uh, it seems like a male fantasy." Um, which I understand from coming from a, a woman's perspective, and now now thinking in that direction, which I clearly didn't in 2016, um, I, I understand that, that this book does not appeal to that mind to to 50 percent of the population, at least not the first quarter of the book, understandably. And the only female representation in the book is a uh, is a power hungry woman who just constantly has orgies and is getting naked and having sex on the phone. Um, the other review went into a deep. Clearly, the guy had an issue with banks because it was it was it was not just sexism. He was also saying like everything's wrong with and I disagreed with that. Um, right, let's draw a line there. I agree with you on those points, and I think that the novel is not nearly as enjoyable as I first thought. Which I'm sad about. I'm so sorry. But I'm also glad that I, it shows that I've grown as a person to be able to recognize it myself. Um, and that, that's, that's, a, that's a healthy thing. And you know what? Um, authors are not perfect. Uh, Banks is one of the best sci-fi authors out there and still is in my books. I just In my books. I just think <laughs> that that one book in particular, when taken out of context of the culture series, um, it doesn't stand alone. It can't. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I have a bunch of quotes that I want to refer to because I underlined many parts going through this that, that I thought were just so quotable and just shows that Banks is genuinely, or was a fantastic author, um, even though he made some mistakes with this book. And let me just pull them up here. Um, right, so the first quote I want to, I want to share is, um, this is a quote from somebody in the book, so somebody is speaking and says, Zakawi, in all human societies we have ever reviewed, in every age and every state, there has seldom, if ever, been a shortage of eager young males prepared to kill and die to preserve the security, comfort, and prejudices of their elders. And what you call heroism is just expression of the simple fact. There is a never, there's never a scarcity of idiots. And I think it's a very harsh, particularly anti-military view set, but it yeah. makes sense from a utopic cultural viewpoint where they're anti-violence for the most part, um, except for in... The, in the prevention of further violence is pretty much the, the culture rule. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was just really interesting That's quote. a really good quote. Isn't it? Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, I enjoy that. Um, my next one is, I just think people overvalue argument because they like to hear themselves talk. <laughs> I'm guilty of this. Yeah. I know I'm guilty of this. <laughs> Defo, um, me too. I think it's just a great summary. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a... That's like... 
something you don't need any context for, you don't need to explain it. I love those standalone quotes. Um, this one's a bit longer, um, but there's one part that I really cared about. Okay, I strongly suspect the things people believe in are usually just what they instinctively feel is right. The excuses, the justifications, the things you're supposed to argue about come later. They're the least important part of the belief. That's why you can destroy them, win an argument, prove the other person wrong, and still they believe what they did in the first place. I think that's so accurate for today's political climate. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you seen people who believe fake news, regardless of what political spectrum you're on, who believe some, some idiotic um, headline without any scientific basis or any real um, evidence behind it, but you believe it because you want to believe it? Yeah, right, or because it fits your bias. It yeah. fits what you want your what you want to, to fit. Exactly, yeah. the, the confirmation bias. Like yeah. I said previously when we did 1984, I think it's ridiculous that we can personalize our news. Mm. <laughs> like that just that kind of blows my mind a wee bit, to yeah. be honest. Um, I've got loads more. I'll try and pick the shorter ones. Um, okay, this one's quite a fun one. But it was pointless. It was stupid. He thought about the thoughtless things. If I were a seabird. But how could you be a seabird? If you were a seabird, your brain would be tiny and stupid, and you would love half-rotted fish guts and tweaking the eyes of little grazing animals. You would know no poetry, and you would never appreciate flying as fully as the human on the ground yearning to be you. If you wanted to be a seabird, you deserve to be a seabird. It's pretty harsh. <laughs> I, I get it. I mean, I, I like the romantic idea of, oh, if you want to fly away and just like, be carefree. I wouldn't but want to be a seagull, though. It also shows the, be the beauty of the human mind, I think, that mm -hmm. quote. Yeah. Um, the next one. Uh, I could try composing wonderful musical works or day-long entertainment epics, but what would that do? Give people pleasure? My wiping this table gives me pleasure. And people come to, clean, to a clean table, which gives them pleasure. And anyway, the man laughed. People die, stars die, universes die. What is any achievement, however great it, it once, uh, once was, when time itself is dead? Of course, if all I did was wipe tables, then of course it would be seen as uh, seem a mean and despicable waste of my huge intellectual potential. But because I choose to do it anyway, it gives me pleasure. And, the man said with a smile, it's a good way of meeting people. So where are you from, anyway? Nice opener. Um... So in the culture series, there's a lot of people who do daily jobs. They just go around doing stuff that people would consider dull, like they, again wiping down tables. I think the next character that we meet is one is an engineer who's building a ship, and Zakalway just being introduced to the culture at this point in a flashback, um, sort of says, "Why are you doing this? Like, can machines do this much more efficiently?" And they say, "Yeah, but you know, it's not about the efficiency. It's about the fact that when that ship flies out of here, the mind that's controlling that ship is happy with it, and I know that I built that ship." Mm -hmm. You know, it's the happiness and the contentment of the job. It's not necessarily the efficiency behind it. And, and then I think they also went on to explain that's very similar to how uh, you might want to knit or sew or play guitar or play a video game. It doesn't Just because you're not going to be the best at it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, and I like it, that. It was quite beautiful because there's so many aspects of human life, I think, that we often set ourselves to... Com we compare ourselves to others around us instead of just enjoying the act itself. Yeah. Yeah, and just doing doing something for the sheer joy of completing something and being like, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I continue a couple more? No, please, okay. please. Okay. Okay. Um, um, simple one and quite philosophical. But just because something does not have an ending doesn't mean it doesn't have a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's really poetic in terms of thinking with the universe itself, right? Um, the universe will eventually maybe have an ending. We don't really know. Um, having read Stephen Hawking's book a few weeks ago, it doesn't seem like it will. Um, it, it, to, to some extent, it will always exist in some way or another. However, does that really matter? Because once the parts of it that can actually notice that it exists, the parts of the universe that can examine itself cease to exist, that is effectively an ending, even though it's not a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, philosophizing I, here. I don't have too much to offer to the conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I will be back to my cheerful self next show. That's okay. Um, my next one's a very fun one. Uh, the way to a man's heart is through his chest. <laughs> well, I thought it was through your stomach. <laughs> no. Well, it, I think it was... Oh, I like uh, that. Okay, yeah, it was oh. a violent... It was, <laughs> I like it. it. I think that was by uh, Zakalway. I, I might be wrong, but I believe that was by Zakalway, who is a warrior, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was what he said. Um, okay, this will be my uh, last one. It says, 
Um, I once visited a place where they killed people by putting them in a chair. Not torture, that was common enough. Beds and chairs were very much the, uh, the par when it came to getting people helpless and confined, to conflict pain upon them, but actually getting a setup to kill them while they sat. They, get this, they gassed, either gassed them or they passed a very high electric current through them. A pellet dropped into a container beneath the seat like some obscene image of a commode producing a fatal gas or a cap over their head and their hands dipped in some conducting fluid to fry their brains. You want to know the punchline? Yeah, give us a punchline. The same state had a law that forbade, and I quote, cruel and unusual punishments. Can you believe it? I mean, clearly Banks is referring to the US states, which still allow uh, capital punishment, or at least did it in the 90s and, 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 and noughties. Um, is, is it all, like, we don't do the chair anymore, do we? I think I it's all think, injection. I think there might be one state that still allows it, but Probably hasn't done it in a long time. Texas? Probably. It feels like, it feels like Texas. It feels I like don't Texas. Know, but, you know, like, mm, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just think it's... It, it could be Vermont. We don't know. It could be something random or like, I don't know. You never know. It could be here. Um, <laughs> but I just think it's a really interesting idea, this... this, And it is a cruel and unusual punishment. Nobody dies to an electric chair naturally. That's not a natural death. Well... That's unusual. That's if you're cruel. you're sitting in a chair and you're fiddling about with your light socket, you might. Well, that's not really natural either, that is, though, is it? Natural, though. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's not a natural death. That's not. But it's, it's, it's not put on the certificate as a natural death. True, but it's supposed to be, you're not allowed to have cruel and unusual punishments, mm -hmm. and that's unusual. It is unusual. Um, and cruel as well, because I think the majority of, including the injection, they usually take ten to fifteen minutes to work fully, which means you're dying for a long time. That's not pleasant. I don't want to get into the politics behind this, but I think Banks is, um, I think that's a really funny viewpoint if you think of a utopic culture where, you know, they, they don't even have crimes. They don't even have laws because mm -hmm. it's so utopic, right? People just don't do that stuff um, because they don't want to because they're happy. They're in a utopia and it's kind of hand wavy, but still, it, I know it wouldn't work with humans, but you can imagine it working with other species. I just had a random story pop into my head. Um, my, my mom, a brilliant woman, absolutely wonderful woman. She worked in South Carolina uh, for as a defense attorney for a lot of people who went to death row. Are you like, allowed to say this story? Help them with their appeals. Yes, this, 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 is, I can, this is one I can say. Okay. You guys may have heard of her. She was called the Black Widow. She poisoned her, I think, several husbands and her brother and her father. Um, but she went to death row. My mom helped her work on her appeals and stuff like that every year. It's been years. It's been a decade, I th think, since we've last received one. But every year for Christmas, she used to send us Christmas cookies, <laughs> which is like nice. <laughs> but you know, I, I don't, I don't get that. She's a confirmed it's probably, poisoner, uh, but she's allowed to cook and send people cookies. I. It's probably also. Uh, she probably finds it hilarious. Like she's sitting in prison laughing at every of, cookie yeah, she sends. Yeah, I just love that. I just love that. My my mom, like she's she's done a lot of. She's helped a lot of like. Um, kind of high pro high profile cases. Sorry, this the sinus medication starting to kick in. Woo, fun. Um, but yeah, the Christmas cookies used to get me all the time. Um, we never ate them though. I, I, we were never allowed to eat them. I wonder they why. So good. They looked good and they smelled good. Oh, yeah. Um, so we have a few comments I want to refer to. Um, first of all, Graham was laughing at the Zoiber comment, which I appreciate. Um, Fathom. Fathom Stern says, I wouldn't use the word trap. I think that's in reference to transsexuals, I guess. Um, the culture does have completely mixed genders and sexes. Like, you don't even... You can even change your species effectively. Like, you can become a tree. Who's so. the trap? Uh, we didn't. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, we, I don't know. We didn't. Um, I think it's generally seen as a kind of transphobic yeah, that's not term. A, I don't think yeah. that's a good word to no, say. No, yeah, no, no. no. Um, Legend Tinker says, that's not entirely unusual. There's been a lot of movies I've watched in the past that I loved. And when I have watched them more recently, I realized sexist, racist, something that I didn't recognize before, but I see now. Um, we had or, the just, or just shite. Halle Berry Gothica. I used to love that movie. I did too. And I rewatched it, it. It's not good. Uh, it's not good. Not entirely it's, surprising. It's not good. I was very disappointed. Uh, we rewatched Airplane recently. It was your first time. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was laughing throughout, but the whole time we were also cringing because it's 80% really well written, hilarious comedy, uh, really novel stuff. Um, and then 20% unnecessary racism and sexism. But that little girl, like, having... Oh, don't even say it. You can't, you can't sorry, say it, you can't say it sorry, on sorry, it was funny. I, it's it. one of those things where you're like, I can't, I don't I'm think, laughing. I don't think that one was racist. I think that one was just pointing out the absurdity, <laughs> right? That was absurd. Um, oh, 
Oh, and hu- just... humor is based in absurdity because that one didn't make sense. Really. Yeah, no, I mean, airplane is 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 a mixed bag, kind of like mash. It's 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 good, but you have to kind of take it in the context. And mash. I, I'm not mad at old timey films for that. Like, it's, yeah. you know, I just you can't. It's, you got to take it in the context, and it's good to learn from. I mean, exactly. that's that's our roots. It's where we came from, whether we exactly. like it or not. And yeah. we we shouldn't just hide and bury the past, even if it's bad. Right? Yeah. So go watch Mash. Go wa- go watch Airplane. Go listen to um, this book or, or read this book, and uh, but recognize the issues that it has. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're coming to the end of the show here. Um, I just want to give a quick quick plot summary because I pl- promised Graham that I would try to explain it because <laughs> it's a it's a hell oh, of a plot. Sorry, yeah. It's a hell of a plot. So um, Wikipedia does a great job. I reread that recently to try and reinforce what I understood because like I said I read it twice and I still don't fully get it because it is just so intertwining. Okay, the premise is there is um, a family that has a childhood friend that often comes to visit whose name is Ithimiel, Ithimiel, one of those things. Um, I already failed at the gambit. Um, And uh, he visits a lot and uh, eventually they find out that his father is being uh, put in prison uh, for being a traitor. And, you know, they're kids, so some of them are teasing him and he's crying and whatever else. a bunch of incidents happen between these kids and stuff, and it's kind of explained throughout the plot. It's nothing particularly massively important. Um, and eventually, uh, the, this guy, this 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 traitorous son, uh, or traitor's son, I should say, but who eventually becomes traitorous, um, he rebels against this family, who are sort of like the governing family of this planet or country. It's never really explained. Um, and this family consists of the main character, so we think, called uh, Zakalwe, and two of his sisters. Um, during the war, um, this sort of family friend who was really like a brother to them, that's why I originally thought when I told you that they're the brothers, they're, they're not actually, um, they, uh, they go to, they go to war with each other and it doesn't even matter what it's about. They just, we just know they have different politics. I don't think it really matters to be honest for the story. And eventually, uh, Ethemiel or whatever his name is, captures one of the younger sisters and they're trying to decide whether or not to, um, attack the the uh, the uh, the rebels because they're thinking we don't want to damage our sister sort of thing, um, and as they're trying to come up with decisions of what to do, the other sister tells the Zakalwe, um, I think you should attack anyway. He would never hurt her sister, so attack anyway. And I, I can't recall if he gives the orders or not, but it doesn't really matter. Um, he goes up to his study and then he hears lots of weird noises outside, and he he goes out with his pistol in hand and looks out. And he sees people sort of in hushed tones, his trusted advisors and his sister and so on. Um, and he, so he puts his gun away and walks towards them. And his, his, his sister starts begging to him, saying, please, please, no, Zakawi, don't do this. Please, please, please. And he goes closer and closer and realizes that his sister, um, his, his other sister, who was not standing next to him, was made into a chair, the one who was captured. So the, the, the family friend, the long lost near brother character, um, turned their sister and didn't just didn't just kill her but made her into furniture to send a statement um what's the statement the statement is i will i am ruthless and will do anything to win this war a big part of the discussion of the war is you know they're, they're supposed to be a family mm-hmm. so even though they're fighting a war against each other they're not they would never hurt each other is kind mm-hmm. of the idea and then he did why a chair though um it's, it's it, i don't know why but i know that banks use the imagery of a chair well if, if i even the couple of the quotes that i said today um the, the imagery of chairs throughout the whole book. Yeah. He's constantly being terrified or shocked by it. At one point, he wakes up in a hospital for after some injury or another, and there's a chair in the room, and he starts weeping and shaking uncontrollably because there's a white chair in the room. And the nurses eventually remove it, but they have no idea what's happening. And we don't know till the end of the book why this keeps happening, why, you know, the, this this apparent warrior poet um, is, is, is broken by a chair. And at the end, it's because we find out that um, his brother is... Effectively, his brother um, betrayed the family and turned the turned what his sister into a chair. Now, that's about 15 minutes from the end that we find that out. About five minutes from the end of the book, you then eventually realize, because um, he's begging forgiveness from the remaining sister, and you think, that's strange, why does he need forgiveness? It wasn't him, is it just because of the war? You're not really sure what's going on? And you eventually realize um, it's because uh, the main character we thought was the Calway that's not actually Zakawi. This is Lithurium or whatever his name is. This is actually the guy who, who made the chair. He is the chair maker. And he lost his mind after doing it. Um, after he waged the war, he lost his mind and took up the name of the a brother who then killed himself, Zakawi. So Zakawi's always been dead. Even the culture didn't know this. So they were all surprised by this fact, even though they're super intelligent, you know, nearly omniscient beings. Um, so it's a really complex story. And 
basically all the stuff that happens in the in the, in the um, moving forward aspect of the book, the stuff that's chronological, um, that happens just to move forward the other plot as far as I'm concerned. It's not really that important. Some of it's really interesting, good fight scenes and stuff, and interesting uses of technology, um, and some interesting characters, and as you saw, some fantastic writing throughout... Um, However, uh, excluding all the stuff from the start, obviously. Um, however, uh, the, main, the most important thing is the ending part where it turns out that this is, this is betrayal and um, the character Twist. lost his mind. Yeah. Um, the the, the not, not Sakalwi at the end, Ithimiel, or oh God, I need, to, I need to get his name. Um, he then has an aneurysm because he just breaks down upon being confronted as the, who he really is and his mind just sort of breaks. The culture tries to save him and then the prologue is kind of hinted that he survives and they want him to continue working for, for them because the culture will use you um, with their utopic views. They don't really care about um, necessarily helping you. They care about um, utilitarianism almost. So that's a summary of the book. I hope I managed to make that as brief as I could because I did miss out a hell of a that's lot a there. One. Okay. Um, that's Use of Weapons by Ian M. Banks. Any, pass any final comments? How did you find reading a bit with all the weird names and everything, by the way? In written format. This book is everything I hate about science fiction. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It is a very harsh judgment. It's everything I hate about it. Well, and it's such a letdown because Banks is a genius. He is. And I will give him all the kudos. But this book made me want to be turned into a chair. I want to be <laughs> a chair. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what you're talking about with all the, the things that are bad about, um, about this book. I mean, did you not enjoy reading about Raz Kodureza Dizzy at Emblis Mad Marenheid <laughs> as a character? And then every character has names like that? Dizzy, yeah. Yeah, Sma. Anyway, um, you have been listening to Where My Pros At. Um, this is us done for this year. Um, we'll be back early next year. We'll be posting on our Instagram, our Twitter, and everything else next year. What we're, when we'll be back. Um, as usual, it'll be a Wednesday, though. Yep. So we're going to take two weeks off, but um, the next book that we are reading, because we're going to go spend our Christmas with our family, is going to be The Bad Seed. So if you guys want to join, uh, join us and read along, we'd love that. Um, you may continue with your diatribe now. Sorry. Um, yeah, the next book we're doing is The Bad Seed. I think we can just tell, tell all the books now, actually, because we've got a little plan. Well, we, yeah. So we've got The Bad Seed, True Grit, and... Toxfig's Almanac. Um... So those are all, uh, the, you know, the, the bad seed is um, chosen by yourself. My choice, yeah. Um, True Grit was chosen by Graham in the chat. I'm Thank very, you very much. very excited about this one. I'm really excited. I love both the movies. I've never read the book. So. Uh, and you want to talk about complex female characters. Thank you, Maddie. Oh, my God. And Rooster Cogburn. He's great. And Graham for choosing it. And Graham. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Graham. <laughs> um, and Tox for Galbanac. Uh, I'll just mention briefly, that's a brand new book that came out recently. I, te I think technically it comes out 2021 fully. Mm -hmm. Um is written by Sandy Toxvig, the amazing feminist um, Norwegian she's originally, but she lives and breathes the UK. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I didn't even realize. She's like the epitome of British. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Um, she does QI. She took over for Stephen Fry, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you guys are ever looking for something to watch on YouTube, her talks called Vox Talks are really, really v -O -X -T -O -X. good. V-O-X, T-O-X, yeah. yeah. Really good. Yeah, really, really intelligent woman. And just little quick, you know, quick interesting facts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and correcting a lot of history, or trying. You've been listening to Where My Pros At here on www.twitch.tv forward slash Where My Pros At. Please do hit subscribe and all that stuff. We very much appreciate it. Um, we're also on YouTube. You can find us there on Versus the World videos. But most importantly, you can find all of our stuff on our link tree. Um, it's linktr.ee. Uh, forward slash where my pros at that's everything that's our instagram that has just everything's on there right so go to our link tree um it has a reddit and everything there as well so thank you all for listening we really appreciate it uh, we I'm love doing the show die now yes um mm -hmm. i'm gonna go walk the dogs in the snow that'll be fun <laughs> okay thank you all we'll be back uh, in the new year have a lovely christmas have a lovely new year and enjoy your holidays bye guys